What's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about process, and I want to look at process through the eyes of two great investors, okay? Uh, you know, what I do here is I stand on the shoulder of giants. I'm going to be sharing uh, two letters from two different giants, okay? Uh, one is Rob Vinal, who runs RV Capital, I think out of Switzerland. Uh, and then the other is Longleaf Partners, okay? That's Mason Hawkins Fund. Um, both of those have you know, relatively recent write-ups on process. Uh, there aren't many investors out there that I've found with write-ups on process, but these are two uh, great investors that, that have that. Uh, but first, I want to show you guys a great resource that I found for uh, finding which great investors have bought different companies recently and talked about them in their letters to shareholders, okay? Uh, this is a resource I discovered uh, as I was putting together my sort of list of, you know, track records for different investors uh, that are perhaps worthy of shameless cloning. And so this, this website here, Vintage Value Investing, uh, what they do every quarter is they basically compile letters to investors for many, many different funds. Okay, if we scroll down, uh, investment firm, it's ordered, you know, alphabetically. And what they just started doing in the second quarter of 2021, right, the last round of letters is including this column here of stocks mentioned. And why that's so cool is, you know, I can come in here and I can search, um, you know, I can do the, the control F thing, command F, command F, and I can look so I have to know what the tickers are, right? It's not by company, it's by ticker. So Proce, which is the over-the-counter version of Process in the U.S., uh, I can see Longleaf Partners International Fund uh, talks about Process in the quarter two 2021 letter to investors. Um, so again, this is the first quarter that... Um, you know, Vintage Value Investing is doing this. I hope it continues. You can see Nintendo here from Ensemble Fund. Uh, it's a fantastic resource for coming in, typing in a ticker, and seeing, hey, which great investors have written this up in their recent letter to investors. So just wanted to give this a shout out. Uh, Vintage Value Investing is also on Twitter, so give them a follow. Uh, but without further ado, let's dive into these Two different letters. So I'm going to take Rob Vinal's Rob Vinal's first. Okay, let's park that back there. So after a multi-year hiatus since the sale of our stake in Baidu, delighted to say we're back in China. Okay, towards the end of the half year. So uh, Rob Vinal does half-year letters, not quarterly letters. So this is for the first half of 2020. All right. Uh, towards the end of that half year, sometime in June of 2020, I bought a stake in Prosis, a Dutch holding company that was spun off one year ago from the South African Naspers. However, its main asset is a 31% stake in Chinese internet mega cap Tencent, now a 29% stake, okay, because they sold off a little bit of Tencent. At the time of writing, the market value of this stake accounted for 120% of process market capitalization. Uh, for this reason, I view our investment in process primarily as an investment in Tencent, right? Uh, the rest of the portfolio for process is, you know, just, just a little extra sprinkles on the top for Rob Vinal. Uh, he's really in it for Tencent. Uh, so he goes through here, sort of a, you know, a, a, what do you call it, a case study for Tencent or just a, you know, what does he think about Tencent from, a, from an investment perspective? Um, so I'll let you guys read through that on your own if you want to do that. Again, I will link to this letter in the description. Um, but, you know, he's a lot to say about Tencent, you know, reports in three main segments. 
Why invest in Tencent now? So this was kind of interesting. Uh, he's known about Tencent since 2013, okay? Uh, a few different reasons, a few different things that, you know, made him hesitant to, to go deeper with Tencent. Accounting. I struggled with Tencent's accounting. To an extent, I still do. Um, it's not very transparent. However, I've come to realize a degree of intransparency or non-transparency is not always a bad sign, counterintuitive as it sounds. Amazon, for example, has never been particularly forthcoming about where and how it earns money. Uh, the question is whether a company is under or overstating the profitability of its core business. As with Amazon, my sense is that it's the former, understating the profitability. Uh, it would be easy to bundle loss-making businesses in their own segment and show higher adjusted earnings if Tencent wanted to. Okay? Uh, its motivation is most likely to avoid unwanted attention from regulators, customers, and competitors as well as to provide air cover for initiatives with a long investment phase. Um, you know, for, for a long time, Amazon was kind of hiding cloud uh, in, you know, just bundling cloud numbers with, with their, other, their other numbers. Um, the reason for that, they were concerned about competitors, right? Microsoft, as soon as Amazon disclosed what it was doing in cloud, Microsoft was on it, and now it's, you know, second place, uh, right behind Amazon. So, uh, you know, th this makes some sense. Number two, gaming. I was also put off by the dependence on online gaming. As a non-gamer, I did not understand the business well, and was concerned it was too hits-based. Uh, today, the proportion of revenue from online gaming has fallen due to growth in other areas, advertising and payments. More importantly, I've come to understand, thanks to observing my children, what an amazing business online gaming is. Successful game franchises are long-lived, and Tencent either owns or has licensed many of the best ones for China, including Honor of Kings and PUBG. Furthermore, Tencent is partner of choice for overseas games developers looking to enter the Chinese market. Okay, That is a very important point there. Number three, capital allocation. Uh, I've gained a greater appreciation over the years of how important capital allocation is in general and how advantaged Tencent's position is in particular. As the dominant social network in China, Tencent gets an early look at which startups are gaining traction. It's able to give investee companies a privileged position in, I don't know how to say that, Wexin, makes it a preferred investor. By the same token, a privileged position greatly improves the odds of the company becoming a commercial success. It is a flywheel that has prov proven spectacularly successful. Okay, Really magic sauce here uh, uh, for Tencent. Can't, can't underplay this. Um, Tencent owns substantial stakes in a long list of valuable businesses, both inside and outside of China, including Epic Games, C Limited, JD.com. So uh, I, remain, I estimate the value of the disclosed investments at over 900 billion Hong Kong dollars. Okay, uh, one fifth of Tencent's market at capitalization. So the portfolio is a significant chunk of the value of Tencent. Um, right, so we've got fair value for Tencent. Keep in mind, this is, you know, over a year old, uh, these numbers. Um, so enterprise value equivalent to 900 Hong Kong dollars per share. Uh, why invest via process? Okay, this is really the, the meat of, of the talk here, of, of the, the letter for me. I prefer to process to Tencent as it trades at a large discount to its NAV. At 175 billion euros, the market value of process stake in Tencent alone account, accounts for 120% of its market cap. In addition, process has stakes in several other internet businesses, including 31% of mail.ru, social networking, 22% of delivery hero, uh, and 55% of iFood. Uh, let's take a quick look here in ticker. Uh, what what the holdings are for Tencent. 
let's see here. We're going to go to Come On Now. What is that? There we go. Track Investing Gurus. Slow, slow, slow. Ten cent holdings. So there it is. Um, Ten cents portfolio of public companies. So uh, you can see they added JD.com. You know, last year in June, probably around the time that um, Rob Vinal was buying Prosys. Um, C Limited added. It's like just in in April of 2021. So anyway, if you guys want to dig into the portfolio of, of uh, Tencent, you can do it there. Um, including these as well as process net cash position, the market, market value based NAV rises to 200 billion euros, implying a holding discount of 31%. Old hands will no doubt argue a big holding discount is not unusual for a conglomerate, right? Maybe warranted. Uh, I prefer to think it through from first principles rather than assume holding discounts are a law of nature. Okay, I really love that. Three main rationales for holding discounts. Okay, Tax disadvantages, excessive costs at the holding level, and poor capital allocation. In each case, the value creation at the investee level does not flow through to the investor. Um, so let's see how that's what those look like in the case of process. None of these justify such a large discount in my view based on my limited understanding of the way process has been structured from a tax perspective. There would be no capital gains tax were it to sell its holdings. Um, should it pay out those gains to investors, they would largely be treated as tax-free reductions in capital rather than dividends as long as NASPERS remains a large shareholder in process. I don't uh, foresee that to change anytime soon. Uh, holding costs. Process has high holding costs in absolute terms at around 100 million euros, but relative to the NAV of 200 billion euros, they are small fry. If I, if I capitalize them at 20x, they might justify a 1% discount. Okay. Uh, so the fundamental question is whether process adds value at the holding level. For example, how good is the capital allocation? Uh, so this is, this is the meat here. To date, process capital allocation has been good, excluding gains from Tencent, which I view as a lucky punch, uh, sort of a lucky home run. It calculates its IRR, internal rate of return, to be 18% per annum since 2002. This includes some prominent exits, as well as appreciation in its core holdings. For sure, it has been a golden period to invest in e-commerce companies, so I doubt the future will be as rosy as the past. Furthermore, I do not view process to be as advantaged in allocating capital as Tencent. Um, however, I struggle to see a scenario where capital allocation is a big enough source of capital destruction to warrant a large discount to NAV, at least the discount to NAV that we're currently seeing. So that's that's awesome that he broke down kind of the three main reasons that holding companies tend to deserve the discounts to NAV that they get. Um, you know, it's uh, really awesome stuff there from, from Rob Vinal. So let's jump over real quick to Longleaf Partners international fund. Now Prosys is the um, fifth largest holding in this fund. And we're just going to scroll right down to Prosys. Prosys, uh, a global consumer internet group, was the top detractor in the quarter. Okay, Prosys has taken a beating recently. There are two key components to Prosys NAV. 29% stake in Tencent. That's you know updated from the 31% figure that Rob Vinal gave last year. 
uh, which represents the majority of its appraisal, and the global e-commerce portfolio, which includes food delivery, classifieds, payments, and education technology. Tencent reported strong results in the first quarter with revenues up 25% and profits up 22% year over year. The online advertising, gaming, and cloud businesses all delivered solid top-line growth year over year and strengthened their competitiveness. The company also announced its plans to step up investments in cloud, large-scale gaming, and short-form video, which we believe can help drive higher value growth in the coming years. But its stock price performance was negatively impacted by increasing regulatory headwinds for the entire online platform industry. The global e-commerce portfolio reported strong results with revenues up 54% year over year. Uh, in 2021 and trading loss margin improving by 11%. The portfolio has been independently valued by Deloitte at $39 billion versus an, versus an investment of $16 billion. Okay? Uh, internal rate of return on these investments is greater than 20%. So that compared to, you know, Rob Vinal gave a figure of 18%. Um, during the second quarter, Process announced the disposal of 2% of its 10 cent stake. That's the discrepancy between the 31% and 29% stake in 10 cent uh, to raise 14 billion. This will provide the company with greater financial flexibility to invest in this growth ventures portfolio. Despite solid operating performance, the discount to NAV has increased in recent months, primarily due to holding company NASPERS excessive weighting on the South African index, okay? Um, so, you know, it's important to note, solid operating performance, right? You get the fundamentals, uh, you know, the, the numbers on the financial statements for the company, how the actual business is performing, and then you have the discount to NAV increasing, right? Market sentiment going against process. Um, right, the excessive weighting on the South African index, which causes funds to limit their exposure to NASPERS due to single stock ownership limits, right? These funds have mandates that they can't have more than a certain percentage of the portfolio invested in one company. So that's, that's been hurting NASPERS. Uh, to address this issue, Process announced a share exchange offer wherein Process proposes to acquire a 45.4% stake in NASPERS in exchange for newly issued process shares. So they're really trying to reduce, you know, the, the size of NASPERS and, and uh, increase the size of process uh, to combat this issue of, you know, the, the, how, how high of a weighting it is on the South African exchange. Uh, they want to make it a little heavier in Amsterdam. Uh, so they don't have that issue, right? They're not facing that headwind of big funds not being able to invest in them. Uh, this will reduce NASPERS weighting to 15% without any tax leakage, right? So from 23% down to 15% on the South African index. While this increases complexity by introducing cross-holding structure, that is for sure. Uh, this is a value accretive transaction for process shareholders as we are buying higher discount NASPER shares in exchange for relatively lower discount process shares and addressing the key reason for the NAV discount. Process also announced an additional 5 billion share repurchase program alongside this transaction on top of the 5 billion announced in November of 2020. We believe these value accretive steps will lead to narrowing of discount to NAV. Given management's alignment and history of unlocking values, we remain positive on process and added to our position in the quarter, okay? So one thing that's really cool, this share buyback program, uh, on the process website, we can actually see a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet that's updated weekly of how much process has put into buying back shares each week. It's, it's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen uh, that level of detail before from a company on their share buyback program. So that's a, a spreadsheet that you can download directly from 
the process investor relations page. Um, but yeah, you know, they seem to be doing a lot of things right uh, in terms of, you know, uh, buying back stock to, to you know, reduce that, uh, that discount between stock price and NAV. Um, they are trying to deal with the issue on the South African exchange being such a big part of that uh, by, you know, moving assets to the Amsterdam exchange. Um, so, you know, those, those are some things, and it's, it's impressive to see that their performance um, on the non cent piece of the portfolio, right? To be 18, 20, greater than 20% uh, since 2002, okay? So you can see why uh, there would be a case to be made for process. You've got this very attractive business in Tencent, right? Dominant, hugely dominant in China, trading, you know, at, at a pretty sizable discount itself, especially from what we've seen uh, over the last six months, right? What's happened in China with fears, right? Investors pulling out of Tencent, Alibaba, you know, many of, of the big companies in, in China. Um, so you've got that situation where you're buying a great company at a discount. And then you get to buy Nasdaq at a discount with its own, you know, very solid management team who's, who has a proven track record of compounding at, at pretty impressive rates over decades, okay? So you've got this kind of compounder within a compounder, all right? So it's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out, um, what the management team at Process is able to do in terms of narrowing that gap between NAV and the share price. Um, gonna be fascinating to see. And I, you know, I first got introduced to Process uh, and Naspers from watching Monish Pabrai talks. And uh, you know, the more I dig in, the more seems pretty compelling. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you guys, uh, process through the eyes of both Longleaf Partners and RV Capital from Rob Vinal. Uh, let me know if you guys have seen any other write-ups uh, from process, especially recently since this sort of share swap has taken place. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm wanting to continue to learn more and more about this. So hit me up in the comments if you've got any other details. Let me know if you guys are invested in Process. I'd love to hear from fellow shareholders. Um, and if you're bearish, that would be fantastic. Bears, you know, light up the comments. Uh, let's just rip this thing apart as much as we can. There's nothing I like more uh, as an owner in a business than to you know, have my beliefs about the company challenged and really have to look at both sides, uh, hopefully from as rational of a point of view as possible. So anyway, guys, like I said, I will link these two in the comments. Hit up uh, Vintage Value Investing, awesome resource for, for letters from uh, great investors. And with that, I will see you all in the next video. Take care.